Well, I've just jumped into the Aston Martin, which is very fitting for this evening's event. I'm going to be heading down to London with Heineken ahead of the James Bond No Time to Die film release, which I'm actually currently filming this in August. And many of you all know that the film doesn't actually come out until September. So this is embargoed and this will be going out in a month's time. So I'm filming a month in advance. So if this video is a little bit confusing because all of a sudden I get a tattoo on my face <laughs> or anything changes, it's because this has been filmed in August and it won't be posted until September. But we're going to be heading down for a social experiment. I really don't have uh, much insight as to what's going to be going down this evening. All I've been told is that Heineken are doing a social experiment called It's Worth the Wait, which is a little play on the fact that the James Bond film has now been stalled, I think, three times. It might even be more, it might be less the anticipation for the film has been building and building and building and I know that they've had to keep on pushing back the uh, release date so it's worth the wait is going to be a little tie between it's worth the wait for a nice chilled Heineken and also it's worth the wait to watch No Time to Die which is the new James Bond film that's going to be coming out so I'm going to be enjoying the Heineken 00 this evening which is their alcohol free beverage but of course they have their normal lager which um, I'm sure many people will be enjoying this evening but the reason why I'm having to drive is because I don't have time to wait for a cab and I'm running late I shouldn't really be talking to you on the camera because I'm so behind but um yeah my train is soon so i'm going to hit the road safely and um, probably get a slightly later train than planned and i'll be seeing you at the event well it's very noisy as you can hear we've just arrived to the gun i managed to get my train just it was very tight but um, we managed to slip on we we're just starting to find out a little bit more information about what it is exactly we're doing here i'll just spin you around and uh, show you the venue so this is the holding area where people are coming and waiting to be seated and then through the back, you'll see that they've already got a session going on over at the back over there. Mr. Charles Irons over there doing his thing. And the bar, which looks absolutely epic. Looking forward to it, it's gonna be good. So I just touched back down into Milton Keynes. A great evening. Uh, we were part of a social experiment. I'll have to divulge a little bit more on it uh, when I get back. But essentially, we were running an experiment to find out, was it worth the wait? How long is the optimum time to wait for your beverage? So yeah, very interesting. And we'll have to see what the result is. But um, I put down, I think 10 minutes. 10 minutes from walking into a bar would be the optimum time for me to get served. Settle in a little bit, but uh, not waiting too long that I start getting uh, a little bit hot on my feet. So yeah, um, good evening, but time to get home. Well, I had absolutely no intention in vlogging today, but I had a phone call today at around about 1 p.m. It was like lunchtime, and it was my friend Neil, and he said, Ali Gregoire, one of our friends, he works in hospitality. He's got some tickets to go and watch Chelsea this evening in London. Would you like to come and join us? A couple of beers, watch the game, grab some food. It'd be nice to catch up. And I thought, do you know what? A little bit spontaneous, but let's do it. So I'm currently in the car on the way to the train station right now. And uh, we're going to head into London, grab ourselves a three course meal at the stadium, which would be very lovely. And then we're going to enjoy the game. So a little bit of spontaneity, but I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a nice evening. And tomorrow I don't have anything that I need to get up for until probably 10 a.m. So I can give myself a little bit of a breather in the morning, should it be a late one this evening. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be good. So this is our suite for the night, Louis boy, Gregoire, smile for the camera boy. <laughs> can we go out now? Come on. Look at that. We just take a moment to appreciate the quality of the lawn. Unbelievable. I'm going to take one of them as well, is that alright? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, one of those, lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, he's left a bit of avocado in there. I was thinking, um, I was thinking Fox Hills. I'd like to play there, it looks really nice. Thank you. 
of the Champions League trophy for the second time in our history. What's going on? I finished up on, what day was it? I think it was like a Tuesday or Wednesday. It was Tuesday at the Chelsea game last week. And we ended up staying out having quite a few drinks. I got home really late, completely ruined my Wednesday because I was absolutely shattered. But it was lovely to catch up with Gregoire and Neil. I haven't seen those boys together for a very long time. I think the last time I was out with them two, aside from actually when I went to Neil's daughter's christening, was at the O2 when we watched the Triple G boxing match, which was like two years ago. So it has been a very, very long time since I've seen those two boys together, but I think you might've heard, um, we're planning on trying to play golf actually very soon at Fox Hills. It's a course that I've never played before. It's around the Surrey area, which is quite often where a lot of nice golf courses are. And it's also where Neil lives around that area, which means that um, it's nice and convenient for him. Um, and I get to enjoy some really lovely golf courses. So a win-win. But what else did I wanted to say? Also, um, when I went to the Heineken event um, last month, I said to you that I'd divulge a little bit about what was going on. So essentially they were doing a social experiment to see how long is the perfect wait for a Heineken. Now, this was done in a way in which they had groups of like six, seven people. Um, and I think they had around about 10 tables and they did two sessions where each table would basically be served their pint at different times. There was a Heineken 0.0, .0 option as well as the Heineken Lager. So you could have either or. But the idea was, was to keep tables waiting and then to give tables their pint quite quickly. And so it was to try to establish what was the right time frame between somebody being seated down in a pub or in a restaurant and then served their beverage. After we'd sat there, we'd enjoyed our drinks, they took us off to another area in the gun and we sat down and we filled out basically a questionnaire and also the optimum time that we felt would be to wait for a beer. I told you it was 10 minutes was my personal one. Well, we got the results and it appears that 20 minutes is the perfect wait from entering in to a building or being seated to have your beverage and it being served. So there you go. And like I said earlier, the link between the social experiment and the Bond film, because Heineken have been a partner of Bond uh, for many years, is they were trying to play on the words worth the wait, which I thought was like a really nice, clever marketing campaign, with obviously us waiting for this film to come out, which is next week. It is currently Wednesday today, so this video is gonna be going live tonight. And um, yeah, next week, we're gonna be able to watch No Time To Die. I hope you guys are looking forward to it as well. I feel like I need to sit down and watch some of the older Bonds, perhaps this Sunday actually. Got a little bit of time, might be able to sit down, watch a couple of the old Bond films, and then enjoy the latest release next week. But what's been going on? Today I'm looking after Bolly and Porter, Lids and Carrier down in London. We actually spent a long weekend in Norfolk, which obviously, as you can tell, because it would be in this vlog, I didn't vlog it, the girls vlogged it, and I just thought, you know what, I'm not gonna do a third vlog of the same trip. I think it's okay one other person is, but for three of us to uh, document it, would have been a lot. And uh, so I just really enjoyed the weekend. Put my feet up, didn't have to worry about doing any work. We went to Holcombe Beach, which was absolutely beautiful. My dad actually used to always go to Holcombe Beach. And I think they still do. They love taking the dog there. Um, you can definitely tell it's a proper dog beach. There's spaniels everywhere, um, which is really lovely. But the sand's really nice. Um, we completely lucked out with the weather. We had some great food. And um, we went to the Gunton Arms and to Burnham Market, number 29. Had a lovely Sunday roast. So if you wanna see what we got up to, you can obviously go and check out the girls' videos uh, because they did document it. And yeah, it was just super chilled. So I've also been working really hard at educating myself on a new project that I'm gonna be working on. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to talk about it next week. We'll see. And it's been quite consuming. There's lots to learn, but I have been knuckling down and trying to get my head around it. And so far it's been relatively successful. So I'm pretty chuffed with how it's been going. It's just taken a long time, which is to be expected but I'll keep you posted on that in the future. I also had my order arrive from Oliver Goldsmith, you can see here. I actually don't know if I mentioned it in my video. So I don't know if you remember the other week when I went and watched the cricket game between Newport Pagnell and the Afghanistan refugees. 
I actually had um, one of the balls coming towards me where one of the cricketers had hit a four. And as it was rolling over, I leant over to pick it up. My glasses fell out of my shirt and I trod on them and smashed them. And I literally loved them so much. They were initially a PR product. I got so much wear out of them. I thought, Do you know what? I'm just gonna order myself a new pair. So I went online and uh, I ordered myself a new pair of the Robinsons, these are called. And you can see they've got like a little bit of a green tint underneath and then they've got a the tortoise shell in brown uh, on the side. But I just feel like they fit my head shape nicely. They're a nice style and um, I've gone for the brown block lenses. So there you go. Just in time actually, because we do have another little cheeky trip coming up, um, which I'm looking forward to sharing. What else has been going on? Obviously with the anticipation and the build of the James Bond film, there's been lots of stuff going on around Bond, um, both in work and in social, lots of conversations about it. They're really looking forward to it. And also a lot of interest as to who's gonna be the next James Bond. Who knows? There's a few people that I know have had their names put down on the table. I don't have any kind of strong feelings or thoughts about it. If you do, and you think that you know who it's gonna be, you get in that comment section down below and let me know. But I did receive actually a really lovely gift the other day from Balmore, Balmore and Aston Martin. And actually this isn't James Bond related, it's just kind of whiskey and Aston's kind of made me think about Bond even though he drinks martinis. But anyway, um, they had a limited edition whiskey um, come out, Balmore with Aston Martin. And they sent it out with a lovely bag, um, which I shared on my Instagram yesterday. I think I've actually got the whiskey behind me. I do. So here, here it is, here. Uh, it comes in this really lovely box, 10 years. Um, it is Spanish oak sherry cask. Um, it's distilled in Scotland and uh, at the Balmore Distillery. Very nice. It says it's a dark amber colour. Um, it's got sun-dried fruit, baked Seville orange and toasted maple, sultanas, sea salt and dark fruit oils, peat smoke, walnut and spices. Sounds very interesting. So I'm going to give this a whirl, maybe over the weekend. Might even enjoy the, a glass of this on the Sunday actually. But I really love the, um, the packaging with the uh, old school Aston. It's very cool, isn't it? So that's what's going down at the moment. Can I give you a little bit of a bee talk actually? Um, but we'll do that a little bit later on because I'm gonna get cracking with a little bit of work. But there has been some changes in the beehive um, that I feel like we need to talk about. You two are like little children. So just so you know, that's Porter's bed and that's Bolly's bed from the girl's office. And whatever isn't yours, you both want. Isn't that right? So Porty sleeps in Bolly's bed and Bolly sleeps in Porter's bed. That's fluff, mate. Not for you. Very tired this morning because the three of us went on a long walk. Didn't we? <laughs> Is that comfortable? You ready to get some lunch? Ah, oh, Porty. I don't know what's going on with this weather at the moment, but it's absolutely beautiful. You boys should be outside enjoying it. You ready? Good boy. Ready? Porter's got a head start, so you got to beat him. <laughs> Porter! Not as well trained, is he, Bolly? He doesn't get the game. Find his keepers. So we're back in the kitchen, cooking up a storm. Today I'm gonna to be doing a 
chicken pasta with roast vegetable dish. Nothing special. I've um, probably spent the last few weeks eating a lot of takeouts. I've been eating out a lot, which has been amazing. I've missed going out and eating in restaurants so much. It's been nice to do it again, but I think it's time to home in on the diet a little bit, calm down and um, yeah, start eating a little healthier again. So that is why today's meal consists of veg. And I've also, as you know, been working on packing on a little bit of size. Um, I've been increasing my protein intake and that's gone fantastically. It's now time to kind of balance out and um, get hold of my current weight and kind of just keep it at the way I am right now. Um, so that's been quite a nice little journey. Managed to get to where I want to uh, within a relatively short period of time. I've actually just placed another HelloFresh order. I know some of you may have remembered, I actually worked with HelloFresh probably about three or four months ago, maybe even longer. I just found it was a really, really great way to learn new ingredients, how to prepare different dishes, and it really did help with that, especially for somebody like me, who's not like a experienced cook, let alone chef. <laughs> so yeah, I've just placed another order. I find it a lot easier um, to cook that way rather than coming up with dishes with the ingredients that I have because I'll just literally cook food and put it together on a plate rather than create uh, dishes with ingredients that complement one another. So rather than looking at it from like a functional standpoint, like here's my carbs, here's my protein, here's my veg, I would like to look at food as this is a nice dish that consists of all those things, but it's a nice way of consuming it. Um, because I'm not gonna lie, my, uh, my culinary skills are quite bland, as you'll see today. But yeah, hopefully that'll arrive soon, because as I mentioned, we have been eating out so much. Um, it's been lovely, but probably a little bit too much eating out. As you can see, I've got the old Glenham Forges back out. Absolutely love these knives. If I could go back and buy them again, I absolutely would do. You do have to really stay on top of them because otherwise they do rust up if you keep them wet and they do go blunt if you don't use them properly. Well, ready for the barks? Three, two, one. Sorry, so yeah, as I was saying, um, I can't remember what I was saying. <laughs> oh, you may have noticed we've got a new butcher's block. Absolute monster. Came from Burgess Reclamation last week. Absolutely love it. I think Lydia still has the vision of having it sunk down into the centre island, which I do agree, I think it would look better because obviously it would be more integrated into the kitchen but there is a little part of me that just worries that obviously once you've cut this centre island if we change our mind, that's it, we've committed to it. So we'll see what happens but really, really love having a larger space. I kind of use this like a workspace, I guess. I don't ever prepare meat or fish or anything like that directly onto the wood. As you just saw, I'll use a chopping board for those separately. But what I do do is um, I tend to chop veg straight onto the butcher's block um, and just keep it quite simple. Cheese, I'd cut cheese on here and stuff like that. Um, because quite a lot of people will message me and say, what do you do to clean it? What about hygiene? Um, and all of those points are very valid. Um, and that's basically the process that I follow. And obviously clean it down um, with hands back every single time I use it. So yeah. So as soon as I've used the knives, I wash them pretty much instantly and then I dry them off with a towel and it just keeps them in a really good condition because nobody wants rusty knives. Oh, 
Oh yes, come on. A little bit of salt in the boiling water. A drizzle of Kentish oil. A little pasta from sticking. A little bit of salt and chicken. Lots of pepper. in the uh, penny today, free from. Oh, come on! And voila, just like that, lunch is served. Now nobody's looking at that thinking, cool, that looks delicious, I'm well aware. But that is my lunch today. I've got chicken pasta with, I always forget what they're called, big courgettes, what they're called. Lydia always tells me what they're called. And I always forget. Damn, I can't think what they're called. Anyway, big courgettes and cauliflower. So I'm gonna get eating because I'm absolutely starving. And that's one big plate of food, I know. I've just remembered, they're called marrows. You supposed to take the seeds out, do you reckon? Probably good for some fibre or something. Hello. I knew you would be down here. Are you tired? You ready for food? Oh yeah? Come on. You want to cuddle, don't you? The purr. Just some food. You heard those words, didn't you? <laughs> you heard those four letters. I'm sorry, mate, you've had yours. You've got to wait a couple more hours still. I thought we'd go for a little wander up to the beehive. Sid and I mentioned that I was gonna give you a little bit of an update on here. Over on my Instagram last week, it might have even been the start of this week. No, it was definitely last week. It was last Thursday. I went out and checked the hives because I'd previously noted that it appeared that we were going through supersession. Um, and supersedure is basically a process where the bees replace the queen. Now I've spoke a lot about this over on my Instagram and if you go on to at Ali Gordon and then hit the bee journal um, icon on my profile page, you'll see that I've actually saved the stories from the day where I came out um, and inspected the hive. So I take the hive to bits, I open it up and I talk through what's going on. Now I haven't actually been in the hive this week. I'm due to open it up on Thursday. It appears that we've got a new queen. Now, we haven't actually seen any new eggs or larvae yet, but I did see the old queen. She was a lot smaller, which is a good sign that they've stopped feeding her. And I say a good sign. Um, it means that they're happy to not feed her because they feel like they don't need her, which is why she's got smaller, which does suggest that they've got a new virgin queen. Now, she could have already been out and mated. Sometimes it takes them a little while to start laying eggs. But if she has or hasn't, there has been plenty of opportunities this week for her to get out, including today. It's blue skies, it's dry, it's warm enough. Um, so she should be out getting busy um, and basically supplying herself with enough eggs to lay enough brood for the entirety of her lifetime. Now, queen bees normally live between three to five years and they're the only bee out of the colony that goes and mates with drones who are the male bees. They can mate up to, I think something like 20 drones uh, during a virgin flight. Now it has been said that they do go out more than once on a virgin flight to try to mate um, if they've not had a very successful first attempt. But they tend to apparently just fly out once which is why we call it the virgin queen flight. And they'll mate with about 20 drones in a holding ground somewhere. Not exactly sure how they know where that is but I'm sure somebody, one beekeeper out there would have the answer for us. 
um, and she basically comes back and she spends her entire life inside the hive or in the wild of course it would be in their nest um, and she basically just lays eggs and the reason why the queen's so important is because she is the only mated bee in the colony she's the only one that can fertilize eggs and worker bees which are the female bees have to be laid using fertilized eggs and drones can be unfertilized so that's why her role is so important we're hoping that we've got a new virgin queen which means that should all things go to plan i have a queen in my colony now that should last at least three years uh, which is fantastic we just need to keep an eye on the temperament of her and the quality of brood that is being produced uh, when i say the quality i mean whether she's laying well um, because i know that i'd mentioned before that my previous queen wasn't laying so well and that could have been because she was coming to the end of her life which everything kind of makes sense she wasn't laying very well she was running out of fertilized eggs to lay etc etc so I'm just standing outside the front of it now. There seems to be quite a lot of activity today, which is fantastic. It means that we're working hard, collecting, I'm sure, uh, the last of the summer flow. And uh, I did stick a little bit of feed on actually as well. So no doubts they've been busy draining that down also. But if I spin you around, you'll see I've actually got two hives. One on the left is a hive that I picked up from Windsor Castle that's going to be utilised when I want to do an artificial swarm because my colony's trying to swarm, which is most likely going to be the use, or I decide to do a split for any reason. Um, that's there on standby, ready to go. But you'll see at the front of the landing board, lots of bee activity this morning, working very, very hard, which is great to see. The update that I'm actually giving you is that the bees have probably replace the queen and we've got a new queen in the colony which is a good thing because we know that we had issues with the old queen before um, lots of people ask what happens to the old queen um, she'll either be starved and killed by the worker bees or the new queen bee will kill her um, or she'll leave the hive herself and she'll probably go off to die somewhere quite brutal quite sad but that's the way it is and uh, that's the honest answer so I think it's just a bit of a waiting game now. We'll probably hold out for another two weeks to see if we start getting some eggs. If not, I'll be calling up my mentor and being like, what are we gonna do? Um, also, whilst I'm out here, I have noticed that if I turn you around again, you'll see that we haven't had much luck with the seeds that I put down for the wildflower. Um, along the back, I've done a lot of rotivating, planted a lot of seeds and nothing really took. Now, obviously these things need watering. We did get a lot of water at the time when I planted them or scattered them, should I say. We haven't had much joy, so we'll have to maybe take a new approach next year. I might even put a bed in and uh, put some plants that I know that they really like and perhaps some seasonal ones as well so they get a nice flow throughout the year quite close to the hive for those slightly more damper days or riskier days when they don't fancy going too far. Not everything's been been smooth sailing with the uh, the bees and the plants have been one of those things. Well that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you did enjoy the video. My battery is just about to die on the camera as well so it's very very good timing. I hope you have a great weekend and a rest of week and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Peace.